episode 12. Welcome to episode 12 of Sweet Boys. This is the first thing you're hearing of episode 12. Weird to state a fact. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Donuts are, they're nervous. Donuts. We're coming for them. I literally, what is it? What is it? Dozen. Donuts come in dozens. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the dozen. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. If you bought a dozen donuts yeah. and started watching the podcast for the first time, dude, you could have a donut at podcast. <laughs> That's so strange that I actually started shaking. I was like, oh, what? You watch the first episode, you yeah. have one of the donuts, you have 11 episodes left, and you have 11 donuts left. Well, how does that make, how does Wait this not only make sense to you, but like, how are you not inspired by this because idea that you're not going to do this tonight? Andrew, when was the first episode of our podcast? What month? November so of 2020. So they're going to have a, d- a dozen of donuts from November 2020. If and then you the- wanted to have a Sweet Boys <laughs> podcast marathon donut party, okay. this would be the episode. So to do it. Oh, they could do it all at one time. Because I would be, I would be eating my donuts, and the, the episode twelve Dude. would be wrapping up, and I'd be licking my fingers, going, "That was a delicious dozen donuts, and that was a delicious dozen episodes." Can you imagine how exhausting it would be to listen to twelve episodes of us <laughs> consecutively? The combination yeah. of twelve donuts is a lot of sugar. Okay. Along with a lot of sweetness, Andrew. Am I right? I'm pointing to the sweet boy sign behind us because okay. if you're the, you're gonna get, you're gonna have too much sugar between the sweetness of the donuts and the sweetness of the boys that you're gonna be st- you're gonna be up till till two p.m. Hey, the next day. Let's just say that your Whoa. dentist is gonna be getting the call. <laughs> Nobody does this. Nobody's ever called the dentist because they've eaten too much sugar in one city. <laughs> they like oh tell on themselves. Okay, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> we're you... just Andrew. We're just trying to intro the podcast right now. And Dr. Say, Fioshi, we got a we got another one on the line. They ate too many donuts. They need to come in. <laughs> can, just, can you just tell them that they do not have to call every time they eat some? Can sweet you just food? tell them to brush their teeth after they're done, and it should get rid of most of the 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 the, the, the problem. Okay, but Mr. Johnson, they said that they were listening to a podcast as well at the same time. Oh God! What <laughs> what, what was the podcast? Uh, it was sorry. What was it called? It was called Sweet Boys. Send in the car to bring them in. <laughs> their teeth rotting, disintegrating. <laughs> This weird dentist who doesn't understand anything. <laughs> we thought, let's just do a quick intro. Well, to hey, speaking intro. of teeth. Yes, and just speaking of teeth, shout out to our sponsors, Candid, to Mint Mobile, and also to HelloFresh. We'll talk about those a little bit later. As for now, Andrew, Sweet. what do you say we get into this podcast, even though we've been doing God knows what for the past two minutes? So let's go to the podcast. Right now. It'll look very similar to this, but we'll be wearing different clothing. Uh, yeah, and if you're an audio listener, we'll do a little uh, a sound. Andrew, what's the sound going to be? Oh, a lion roaring. Wouldn't that be fun? All right. Um, <clears throat> anyways. I've refused to talk today. What? Andrew, you can't be like this. I'm what sorry. Is, Andrew, listen, I hope you do talk today. Uh, I hope you do. <laughs> this is the funny thing about a podcast is that you just have to go into it feeling however you're feeling. Sometimes we're feeling uh, very introspective. Sometimes we're feeling uh, very dumb. Can I tell you something that happened last night? I, uh, I, I treated myself to a little bit of uh, Valentine's Day cake because it was past midnight. And so I wanted cake and I thought, well, that's a reason because technically it's Valentine's Day right now. And uh, so I get a piece of cake. I take it back. I'm eating it over my sink like, a, like an animal, straight up heathen. And uh, I bite my tongue so hard that uh, my mouth is just a combination of chocolate and iron tasting uh, blood. blood. Yes. So I spit out. I go, I freak out and I, I spit out the cake and it's just, uh, it's just, you know, know, dark brown and, and red, and it's just this wonderful, uh, you know, collage of my DNA and chocolate. And, uh, and you know, the first thought that I had as I was looking at my blood spewed out into the sink with this dark chocolate was, that actually looks like a Valentine's Day moment, because it was red yeah. and brown. And I thought, yeah. that's that's kind of cute, yeah. you know? And then I Googled what to do when your tongue feels numb. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't know if I should go to the hospital. It was like crazy, Andrew. I, I bit, like, through my tongue. Like, I think my teeth connected through my tongue. You ever done that? I was just eating a piece of cake. Like, we don't realize how hard we do things. Like, why was I going so hard on a piece of cake? (laughs) I'm fine, though. I'm fine. I licked some ice, and then I gargled some aloe vera juice. I'm doing all right. (laughs) Gargled some aloe vera juice. I love gargling aloe vera juice, and I'll tweet it. Well, it's fine, but I just don't think that that is the appropriate... um uh, oh, what does that mean? Appropriate aloe vera thing. Well, for instance, like there's certain medications. Are that... you aware of the healing properties of aloe vera? 
Are you aware of the fact that sometimes you do things that don't make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but at the healing properties of aloe vera are just off the charts. This is the worst start <laughs> to the podcast we have no. ever, ever, <laughs> ever so. done. You don't think so? It is Valentine's Day today. We're, we're recording the podcast on Valentine's Day. So if anybody wants to know what we're doing on Valentine's Day, Garrett's talking about eating a cake. And biting his tongue off. Gargling aloe vera. And yeah. I'm talking about how I feel like I need to go to the doctor, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only before our dates tonight. We have really impressive Yes. Dates. My date is with... Um, I have a date tonight. Interesting. Yes. You have a date tonight? Interesting, because I hadn't heard about it. Okay. I just hadn't heard about it until this moment. Well, if you figure, you know, we're, we, we're like only really hanging out with each other exclusively, so figured maybe you would have told me. I got a date tomorrow on Valentine's Day. <sighs> Here's some information about the person. Isn't this interesting? I'm excited, and I could have been like, you know, happy for you or something. No, I fibbed, Andrew. I'm sorry. I don't have a date. You're lied. <laughs> You're lied. Well, I have a date tonight too. Uh, I mean, uh, I have one, and when you, even though you don't. Oh yeah, who's it with? Oh. Oh, um, I've got a date tonight. Her name is a large pizza. <laughs> I wanted to tweet out today, yeah. like, like takes photo caption. Me with my bay, and then like me holding a pizza. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because the most uh, it's, shit posting. It's just ha- yeah. Well, I was no, but I was sarcastically tweeting the idea of me actually doing it. Sure. Without the awareness of that being the most on the nose thing ever, and no shade to anybody who did that today. No, because there's I, thousands. I'm gonna say shade. <laughs> I saw a tweet. Oh the, my god, an actual shade alarm going off for the first time in the podcast, Garrett. No, I saw. Bro- oh, I gotta take this sign down. No, don't, don't. We are still sweet boys. I saw a tweet that said something like, uh, "It was just, it was just one of those sort of like, uh, oh, ha ha ha, my bay is pizza. I'm single. Lol, 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 Valentine's Day." And then it just went into like them typing like crazy because it's to be sort of like, look at every single tweet today. My feet. I didn't know that was a thing. On Val- Also, how is Valentine's Day podcast content? In terms of posting it after Valentine's Day, are people? Oh, oh, who cares? No, I don't care. But I'm just wondering. I don't want to be wasting everybody's time if they're no. like, "Hey, that was a week ago." You know what? No, they're reminiscing. Yeah, you're right. The, so <laughs> the feed, just this weird blind commitment to what feed, we're doing, even the, though it makes no sense. The, you're right. the, the feed today that I saw on my Insta oh. was uh, was just. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. On Valentine's Day, you post a photo of you and your significant other, and that makes complete sense. And I know people are thinking, "Yeah, of course, of course, you do that. What else would you do?" And I get it, but I just didn't know that every single person it was like, "Today's the day that you post that photo." I saw a precious photo of Scott Hoying and his boyfriend Mark oh. on Instagram.com, mm. and uh, and I thought, "How cute!" I don't know if I liked it. I don't remember. Sometimes, mm. do you ever do that? Do you ever love a photo and then start talking about it and then not actually like it? I uh, <laughs> it's like, you just know. realized that I uh, did not like your latest Instagram photo, and I'm sorry, Andrew. Thank you for seeing my Instagram post. You know what? It's a thought that counts. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like it right now. This is my public apology to Scott Hoying and to Mark for like not liking your Instagram picture. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I will remedy this. Sorry, I'm going to like. Scott Hoying's photo. Andrew, you're supposed to like mine. <laughs> There's a couple. Wait, no. Uh, 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 Scott uh, Hoying's no. photo has been liked. No, 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 oh, no. just got a DM from Scott Hoying. That's that's crazy. D- Scott Hoying of Pentatonic. He just said, what? "Hey man, just saw the like on my Insta post. Just wanted to say thanks for liking the post." Oh. Some people in my life, they actually don't care to do that type of thing. Oh, but it's me, nice to get recognized and have that sort of friendly validation. Screen. I really appreciate it. Oh, let me see the oh, screen. P.S. Oh. Tell that quote co-host slash and then a lot of quotes friend of yours <laughs> that he isn't welcome on my podcast again. <laughs> I, I, can, can I see the screen? Huh? I just sorry. want to see that. Oh, actually, sorry. Sorry, 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 I put my phone over there. Oh, that's there. fine. You could just sorry, it. I got like the screen limit on there. Like, I, I'm trying to not be on social media that much. Oh, really? So I, um, yeah, it's like it locked me out. Okay, I'll just get on my phone. We can log into your Instagram because I want to see a <laughs> message real quick. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> I was on their podcast. I went on Scott Hoying's uh, podcast uh, with his friend Rosie. It was a really fun experience. It, it's funny to go into someone else's uh, sweet zone. <laughs> <laughs> that so, makes sense. Oh, is this the sweet? Oh, shit. I'm hearing something vibrate. It's my little phone. Oh, it's a message from uh, from Scott Hoing. <laughs> it says, hmm, just got the weirdest like on my post. Dot, dot, dot. This is actually kind of freaking me out. Um, Who is that guy? Oh. That's weird. I thought you like kind of had like a rapport with him. Okay. 
This is getting so <laughs> like plotting. I don't care anymore. I, I think I, I think we both, we both realized at episode hmm, seven, yeah, seven or eight, yeah. This is um. Oh, that's a good title. We don't care anymore. That's kind of sick, right? Post ring, post ring with a thumbnail. We like do care. We actually work really hard to make. Like actually care a lot. <laughs> nah, yes we do. There's a balance of caring and not caring. I think it's a cool balance. Let me. Whoa. Let me explain Andrew. something to you. Whoa, brother. Are you okay? Sorry. Explain mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's a there's a balance when it comes to caring. And it, it's, no, it's interesting. No, 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 let's sit here and dissect this very sort of confusing conversation. Oh, topic. did you ever have to dissect a frog? I don't want to talk about it. I don't either. The answer is no and yes at the same time, but it's a, it's a whole thing. Same. Oh, you know what's funny? I was in community college and we had to do something like that. Yeah. And this is a real thing that happened. I don't know why I'm clutching my pearls right now. Well, it makes sense. I threw you off by getting up in my weird... I thought you were going to attack me. No, 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 no. Oh. Never waste my energy on that. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> no, very, I don't, uh, my mind is six ways. Still doesn't know like how to meet that yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. In community college, there yeah. was like a biology thing, and we had to do something like that. I don't remember what it was. It was something really specific, and it wasn't a frog. And I remember being kind of not squeamish, but I was kind of just like on the sidelines, like I don't know how you expect me to do this yeah. without it being this whole sort of weird production of me having reactions and kind of resenting the process. And during that, the teacher called me out. He was like, oh, Andrew, like, what are you doing? Just like do it or something. And I was, and I said, and I said <laughs> verbatim, I think I said, Oh, you got to put me on blast like that. And then he said, put you on blast. <laughs> what is that? Some like weird lingo. And I was like, What's going on? <laughs> I was like, this is just weird, man. Cut to, the, <laughs> cut to the frog just being like, okay, like, I like really am like got the worst part of this deal. <laughs> just hearing you guys be weird over his like little body. It oh. wasn't, it wasn't a frog. What was it? I don't know. It was, <laughs> was it, it was, it was something. No, it was just something else. It was the whole thing. I just, I just, you know, certain, certain things you just block out. But I do remember the, that very specific comment of him acting like I was some sort of, what what would you call it? Like a millennial with the lingo. Like oh, I hate putting that. Putting me on blast. Can I, like, can I can I tell you something that I, I really dislike, actually? that I Oh, this is a straight up, I know we've been talking about frogs. This is a real topic. <clears throat> um, this is something that I really, that really, really irritates me, Andrew, to the point of where I've thought about doing a fully dedicated like video about this. And I don't know, that's a whole separate thing. But I really, really, really dislike the uh, generational battle thing that's happening. I mean, I really, really, really dislike it. Mm. Um, and now, listen, this is one of those things that me even speaking about it makes it seem way more valid than it is. Because I saw some like like article the other day w written by this like whack w w website that was like, uh, Gen Z versus millennials, the hate is real. That was so disgusting, man. I hated that so much. Because I was they were like fanning the flames of this invisible narrative just for like clicks. I was like, that's not real. I was like, I'm very on the internet. Yeah. You're very on the internet. I've never seen anything like that. Like this weird kind of like, I mean, listen, I kind of got it with like the boomer thing. Cause like people put politics and stuff on, you know, this like early, early, early generation. And it's a little mean spirited, but that's like weirdly kind of understood it. But the gen, have you seen anything like that? So what's the, what's the bat? What's the generational battle here? Gen Z, which yeah, is what? But Gen Z is what? You were born between what and what? Oh, I don't know, but I think it's probably like 2000s. I, I think Gen Z would probably be like babies born but like before 2000s or something like that, I assume. I think probably, but no, my point is though, is like, I thought about, I, I was drafting out tweets. I was thinking of like video formats. I was like, I really want to talk about this. It's really. Gen Z versus what? Millennials. I mean, is that us? Yeah. Which is what? Uh, people born past like, uh, I'm sorry. I don't remember. I, I think I do know this though. Gen Millennials are people born, uh, before like 1990. Producer. Eight. Please give us the information in our headsets. Andrew, we don't have a producer. Hey. Uh, Andrew. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I hear what you're hearing. You're hearing nothing. Um, yes, nope. yes, yes. The information is coming in from our producer. Okay. Um, Jin. Seems like you're just looking it up on your phone. Lineal. Lineal. How about years? Gen Z millennial years. Oh, yes. Um, getting it now. Uh, you well, just looked it up. Millennial, millennials born 1981 to 1996. You just uh, looked it up and everyone heard you and saw you. I was born in 1992. You were born in... 1989. You're born in 1999. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm you, did you mean 1990? No, no, no. I actually said 1989. Oh, 1989. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 19, 1989, 1999. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just, just. Everyone's <laughs> trying to work out our ages, like so confused. My right. hair looks so stupid, and I'm trying to cover it up with a hat, and I feel like it's making it look even dumber. Me every day. <laughs> <laughs> born, born 1981 to 1996. Garrett was born in 1989. Sorry to dox you, but it's on FamousBirthdays.com. I, I was know. born in 1992. <laughs> we are both confirmed as millennials and Generation Z, born 1997 to 2012. Okay, whoa. My, yeah. Jesus. My, Wait, so how old is it? Ni- 1997? That's somebody who's like 24. Yeah, so age we, stuff on the internet is just something so funny that I've never cared. Yeah, Wait, what? I just was like on my phone the whole time. <laughs> just just like this. Oh, God. Yeah. Andrew. <laughs> I'm like, for the audio listeners, I'm just on my phone. Just like scrolling on Insta. Oh, God, that would suck so bad. Just, can you imagine this? Just go on. Oh, uh, Andrew. So, yeah, today I, uh, yeah, the audio listeners are like, what is happening right now? Andrew is just on his phone passively doing this bit that's like actually abandoning me in this moment <laughs> that I don't I don't think the bit is worth the literal silence. Andrew, can you please uh, <laughs> join this me? right here? Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh I hated it. Hmm? Sponsorship mode. Peace and love. Peace and love. And calm vibes. And calm vibes. You know, once upon a time, sponsorship mode in its first inception. Wait, my hat's making a sound. My hat's making a sound. Hang on. Wait, ow, it's still happening. Okay. Sponsorship mode is a place of peace and relaxation. Andrew, what's that sound that I'm hearing? It oh. sounds like um, crops in a farm. It's like you're having a nice massage on the... Uh, <laughs> I was going to try to weave in getting a massage with the crops. Oh, my God. <laughs> getting a massage next to a bunch of crops. Well, that sounds kind of nice. <laughs> oh, but a bee stings you. And someone's like... Right on my thigh. I got bee stung in the finger once on you a did golf it. course. I'll I, show that bee what's what. Oh, does it bring you peace to know that that bee is dead? No, Jesus. I love bees, but I, I'm asking. It was a long <laughs> no, time ago, and he hurt you. Who knows if it was a bee? It could have been something else. Could have been was... an immortal bee, and maybe he's still out there waiting to get you again. You. <laughs> <laughs> does that scare you? <laughs> Teeth. Teeth. Yeah. yeah. Teeth. We've all got them. I brushed them this morning. But some, In the shower. Oh, yeah, I, I like to do that, too. Teeth are wonderful, Andrew, and they deserve attention. But sometimes they can misbehave a little bit in our mouths. This is true, I guess. It is. And sometimes, Andrew, our teeth need to be straightened out a little bit. Not too unlike a pack of unruly babies. Not too unlike you in high school. Oh, I was wild. I'm a sweet good boy, but I was a bad boy. Here's the thing. If someone is unhappy with their smile, they don't have to be. Andrew, I'm talking about Candid. The clear, comfortable, removable, and practically invisible aligners to help straighten your teeth. And now, people can love their smile. In fact, let me tell you a story about Sharon. This is a true story. This is an actual Candid user right here. Oh. Sharon from Pennsylvania said, I wore braces as a teenager. Flash forward 30 years, I had crowding at the bottom and one of my teeth actually stuck out. That's when I made the decision to move forward with Candid and I finally got my confidence back. Okay, okay, uh, buddy, (laughs) uh, you're telling more stories than the guy who doesn't understand anything. You're telling more stories than the librarian. (laughs) the librarian tells stories like everyone's in their own like space trying to be like so focused on like studying and stuff and some weird librarian okay gather around what are the idea that the librarian is the one who writes all the books oh they write the books <laughs> print, like candid right now calls us hey guys um can you please get back on the products get back to the teeth Keep it to the teeth. Candid is here to help straighten people's teeth so everyone can fall in love with their smiles again because smiles are nice and you know it. Smiling is sweet. Smiling is nice. Sweeter Everyone than the honey that's, that's in, in the store. <laughs> Ew. Andrew, listen. I'm listening. With Candid, your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. And you work with the same orthodontist from start to finish, so you're never like, great, who am I working with now? Thank goodness. And Andrew, people can start straightening their teeth today. Right now, people can save $75 on Candid's starter kit by going to candidco.com. That's candidco.com slash sweetboys. And use code sweetboys. That's candidco.com slash sweetboys code sweetboys. Take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit. What a deal. What a steal. Do you hear my stomach growling? Speaking of teeth, I need to get, we get some chewing su- this get, some, get, some get food. Get some food stage, some teeth mashing on some... Should we get back to the podcast? Right after I grabbed this lemon. I grabbed it. Weird. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. Okay, back to the podcast. 
Dude, I learned recently that there's a word for when someone pulls their phone out during conversation. Do you know what that word is? I don't know what it is. I actually yeah, forgot. Yeah, it sounds t- like talking to my ex. Oh. Let's um, just say she wasn't having it. <laughs> I don't know. Come on. I'm, okay. just, I'm done. <laughs> no, but there's actually a thing where people pull their phone out like mid-conversation, and it's like a, I, it's becoming a word. I'm sorry. Maybe people listening are like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember uh, what the word is, but it's like an actual thing, and I like the idea of that catching on and sort of being shamed. Oh, like, yes. Sorry. I didn't want to get you off track. I'll bookmark that. We can come back to that in two seconds. What were you going to say about the... um? something millennial thing yeah i just think i've seen that narrative online of like and it's just it's just people writing these articles like it's not a real narrative and i because i clicked on the article and i was like what is this bullshit because I, ca- I can't imagine like why would you know we live in a pretty divisive time right with politics and this and this and this and that like so many different things the people feeling a different way all these issues i was like why for something of no consequence would someone want to create a divisive energy between like a generation who both came up on the internet i was like that is some weird, ageist, nonsensical, like strange narrative to want to try to push. You look very confused right no, now. No, I'm, I'm not. I mean, what, well, you're confused by the topic, right? I am I'm, confused. I'm confused right there with you. I don't really get it. I just don't even understand what that even means. And like, I think that that's an appropriate response to that because it was just like, I don't know. I it's it's And it's one of those things because sometimes I get irritated on the internet when I see people like pushing, like speaking about something that's not even a thing. <laughs> so I guess ironically, I am doing that right now because I'm putting this idea out there. But I want want to say to anyone listening that if you ever see that like weird like Gen Z versus millennials thing that it's like literally not real and it's like the stupidest thing I've ever seen yeah I don't even know what that I mean just Gen Z I mean 24 year olds like that I we know people that are 24 like yeah I don't even but what's the where's what it's what? just not a thing plus it's I, I I just don't understand it and I it just seems quite literally insidious like a weird scary thing to be like who is trying to create some weird barrier but plus like Oh, uh, don't even get me started on like my theories about like I you know how they have like AD like times like uh before Christ after Christ like how they like actually mark times yeah. or after death you know before I think like BTT these, what's a BTT what is that AD ATT what is that and security before, system before TikTok after TikTok Oh well I kind of do mean that like I honestly think that there's going to be like an app like the new marker for time and I know this is like the weirdest specific thought probably just for like me and two people who might find it interesting I do think that the new marker for time is going to be like before the internet and after the internet I really feel that way <laughs> Yeah I think that's already kind of isn't that kind of already a thing Well I yeah maybe maybe it's in its early stages right now but I definitely think that it's going to be a significant like marker of time like once religion becomes a little bit more like I don't know I guess the only word would be like antiquated and people are like yeah we don't really use that anymore <laughs> I think it's going to be like this in a couple hundred years like before I just think it's just such a like a sharp de- de- like sort of divide in like human thought processes it's and like stuff <laughs> What B B uh um B E for um, B E for S B P. That's going to be the new thing. What is it? Before, Sweet, oh my God! Sweet before Boys. episode, <laughs> before episode four of the Sweet Boys podcast. I don't know why I'm on this weird tangent about time and the way we're going to separate. People are going to be talking about that. I just think it's strange. I don't know. I saw that on the the, the internet, and I wanted to go on a freaking. I, I don't do that on Twitter. I don't like call people out, but I wanted to be like, "Screw you, this company." I don't want to be an a hole right now and send and call them out. But it was just, I was infuriating. It it, it seems like yeah, mis, it, misdirected weird energy. Yeah, and they were well. I, I listen. I know what it's like to want to to get clicks. I used to work at like a comedy website, and they were all about that. And I get it. I'm not trying to villainize them, but like it, it is one of those things to where like I know what you Dude. did. Like it was a slow day, and you guys went like, "Okay, what can you write about?" okay I saw some sassy tweets about like Gen Z versus millennial so let me like craft this weird narrative that's gonna like get clicks and stuff and I was like oh that's just a toxic weird thing to put out there last summer Jennifer Love Hewitt um what is that last summer Jennifer Love Hewitt what is that sorry I just had to resolve it you said I know what you did so I just, ah! I just had to, no, no, I no. can't believe no, it. No, no, I just had to like get get it through. Uh, it's like weird. Like no one says I know what you did and say like. If my phone was in arm's reach, I would call the cops. <laughs> I, I I would. I would just and I and I, I would say I don't help get, me. I don't understand why the problem is. <laughs> I, I was just it. I was just finishing it for like the sake of everybody. Everybody heard that they're like someone's got to say it, and I just finished it. It's like resolving it. I had to resolve it. You can't you can't you can't just say um, you can't just say certain things. It makes people it makes people uneasy. Andrew, do you want to scream out loud right now? I feel like there's something that you want to scream. Do you need to, like, scream something? No. no. You seem like you have a genie inside of you that's about to, like, freaking bust out of your body. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> I, you know, um... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Sorry! I, 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 uh... 
Nothing, man. I'm just, fu- just sitting here, just thinking about things to talk about. I'm thinking of the, um, thinking of the butterfly effect. What is it? And that, dude, every single thing that we're saying here and not saying here, the way we're saying it, the tone we're saying it, micro quantum quantum physical levels of of, of shifting the universal. You know, in a line. The, there's like a line. I know what a line is. Yeah, you know, the, like lines that aren't parallel to each other. Even like one little off. Yes. Boom. Over years, they're 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 so far apart. So just imagine every decision is like that line and just moving it a little bit. And over the course of years, we're changing people's lives here. We're changing the world. We're changing like the DNA of people. We're changing the the uh, geographical foundation of the Earth's crust in some way. I agree. <laughs> I um I, I used actually to th- somebody in the comments if if you know of somebody or if you have like an uncle who's like a metaphysicist or something feel free to have them respond in the comments and saying everything he's saying is right he's correct that co-host of his who's kind of acting like it's not true he's he doesn't get it <laughs> um I actually really 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 do feel like this is a true thing when I used to when I was a kid I used to think about how like one yeah. drop of uh, food yeah. coloring in the ocean would objectively change the color of the ocean. And I used to think about that a lot. And I told my brother that one day, and he was like, no, would it not in a billion years? And in my head and heart, I thought, yes, it would. Well, And to this day, I feel that way. And it's like a really funny thing. One I, drop of food coloring in the ocean would change the color of the ocean. Well, And I know, I know that it wouldn't actually change the color of the ocean. Well, but no. on some micro level, it absolutely would, even if it was by a... St- freaking trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a degree it would change the color of the whole ocean <laughs> and i would <sighs> okay i would here's what here here's the thing i'm listening to you with the utmost motivation of wanting to agree with what you're saying and i think objectively you are right yeah. but i think there's a difference between like yeah you're changing a part of the ocean with that food coloring because i will say i think that there is some sort of like actual scientific backing that's going to say that food coloring is at some point like going to like be non-existent because it's so diluted that it's not actually changing the ocean. I hear what you're saying. But now if you were to say that just even putting like throwing a rock in the ocean would somehow change the entirety of like the ecosystems and everything of the ocean. I think that that is true because that's like a physical shift. That's like measurable. Like, oh, I put the, I, the rock. The rock was dropped in the ocean. This fish hey, moved. Hey, hey, I'm supposed to be filming my new TV show. What are you dropping me in the ocean for? Hey, no one dropped me in the ocean when I was filming the Scorpion King. What's this all about? Rock in the ocean. Um, the. Hmm. <laughs> what I could see, have possibly I, I, gotten you off track there? Oh, here, here, okay, the, you know, I'm going to say something that you're going to be like, no, 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 Andrew, we've, we've gone way off the deep end before. I think in that moment, that's yeah. as far off as we've ever gotten in terms of trying to like actually yeah. make any sense. Because I was saying something that in my head, I'm like, well, this is all going to get cut because this is so un, 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 untr- yeah, yeah, so uncomprehendable, so confusing. And then in the middle of that, yeah. an overlookable like example of, of an analogy that I was saying, you cherry picked a very overlookable part of it. Yeah. And then you took that and then you kind of like, you used it as some sort of like joke to springboard off of. Yeah. And then I was barely even able to keep track of what I was saying because it was so convoluted and like untangible that I lost what I was going to say. Oh, no. And your joke, in all fairness, I think you would agree, yeah. a C minus in terms of the oh. joke. And I'm <laughs> yeah. saying it because you've had A pluses before. Yeah. yeah. And I, we know. We know where we're at in terms yeah. of radio. So I just, I put that all together and I just think about the viability yeah. of, uh, us even being here at all. I just really question it. And, uh, you know, I will smell Mac does its candles as a way of just kind of segueing ourselves out of this. I'll hold the bones. Smells spider. good. I know it, it does smell good. good. You I, ever I, go to Bed Bath & Beyond? I've <laughs> gone to Bed Bath & Beyond. I think that little things do make a difference. And, <laughs> and yeah, this podcast in some way affects people's trajectories in their lives. Something. I think about that every time I go outside. Yeah. Like, I can understand how if people might get a little anxious about even just going outside, because even them just driving their car, doing anything, being outside affects the trajectory of the entire planet. Like, the fact that your car is in front of someone else, like, kind of holds that person Dude. up. Like, all that stuff yeah. is kind of funny. But I always, I always, I, I have, I try to have a healthy relationship with that, because I oh, actually yeah. do think a lot about that. And yeah. I go, like, dude, don't be, like, 
quote unquote weird about this, like actually just go out in the world, live your life. And as long as you're making good choices and doing things that you think are supporting like a good version of yourself in the world, then like you're never going to be doing anyone any. Yeah, world. we're like really tapping into a very yeah nice um, thing because, yeah, when I was younger, I used to think about that, like mm. having OCD and stuff like that. I don't know if you've ever encountered a similar headspace as this, but yeah. sometimes I would get caught up in my role in people doing things like for me. Like, oh, I, I, I want this thing. Oh, I'll go to the store and get it for you. Oh, wait, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, I don't want you to like, yeah. I don't know, get in a car accident or something. Like, I don't want to think about like me, like my role, whatever. Yeah. But you're totally right. As yeah. long as everything that you're doing is in kind of, is out of like good intention and love, then that's all that matters. Because then, yeah. That should be the only thing that dictates anything that you do at the end of the day. If you're ever on the fence about something or you're overthinking, well, what happens if this and then this and then this? As long as you're thinking about things from a good place with good intentions, it's like, come what may, right? I think that you would agree with that. Definitely. I agree with all of this because I think about Oh, no, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's, 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 and also something that's a little bit negative for people to do is to think like, well, wait a minute, how is that affecting the world negatively? Like my car being in front of someone else's, what if that, what if like that's the, uh, you know, reason why they're going to get in a car crash in like a week or something like that? But also, that could affect the positive, too. Like, your car being in front of someone else could make them the reason why they don't get into a car crash or yeah. why they don't why, do something. Why, I didn't yeah, – yeah. I, I, this is, like, one of those things that I think about, and for anybody who's following this, like, I, I, I think about this stuff weirdly a lot. Yeah. But just assume that nobody else thinks about it. I think that these things that, that connect us um, are really, really, really universal. And I see a lot of this. I was talking to my friend Sam Khan the other day on TikTok, who's really great. I was talking to him in the TikTok DMs, which is a weird thing to do. The TikTok DMs <laughs> are like never... no place to speak to someone, but sometimes I catch myself doing that with someone that I'm close to, and I'm like, what the hell are we doing? I've never like, I've we... never exchanged a DM on TikTok Oh, that's life. funny. I've never, I don't even know how to f check DMs on TikTok. Oh, well, I'll show you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I was talking to him, but point is though, is we were sending each other these, uh, these, these uh, TikToks that were very like made us feel less lonely, that mm. we're really connective. Those kind so of like, we're all the same in a sweet TikTok, way. Dude, TikTok is just so funny. Just these, these yeah. people being like, um, I'm gonna make you think of this memory that you forgot. And it's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It's like, it's like using a pencil. <laughs> You're like, yeah, like the pencil <laughs> sharpener. Remember that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's just that happened a while ago. Like, Don't. Remember when you used to walk on the sidewalk and not step on the cracks? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's like that's like a kind of cute one, I guess. Tick There's a lot of great prefaces for the TikTok chef community. Not no shade going off, no shade alarm. Turn off the shade alarm. Okay, it's, it, turn it off. He the said shade turn alarm is going off for no reason. Who's Why in is charge doing of the shade that? alarm? Turn it off. Okay, What's thank going you. On? I don't know. That was weird. It's that was off. crazy. Anyways. Rita Kuma's over there hitting buttons left and right. <laughs> that was a reference for like seven people who remember. Okay, please comment down below if you totally understood and followed the reference. I totally got the read the Kuma thing. Also, the butterfly effect thing was really real. It was we weird for Garrett to question either of those two things. Andrew, you know, wait, real, real, dead I, ass, dude. You know, I'm not questioning that at all, right? The what, butterfly what, effect. I know, is something I know you're I, not. But what did you question earlier? I definitely do. Was not questioning the butterfly effect thing at all. I think it's really interesting, like and I think about that a lot. Gaslighting your identity. It's so weird. You don't believe in the butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> Making you feel weird, like you have to take a shower or something. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> I hate when people do that. Right? There <laughs> are people like that, and they should be uh, put down that shoot that Veruca Salt in the original Willy Wonka was with the golden eggs, and she just goes, Wah! and she probably hits like As long as it wouldn't result in any sort of crazy injury. No, but they do break both legs. I don't remember the podcast name there. Oh, yes, yeah, Sweet Boys. Yes. So the Sweet Boys who are okay with someone falling down a chute and maybe breaking both legs, but healing eventually. Great. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> weird thing to agree to. What I was going to say was um well for that little dance into the off track uh zone wait i don't want to get you off track from what you were saying but no Punch <laughs> <laughs> never gonna tell you no but that was a crazy wild thing that happened on the last podcast and you had a reason I, for I, it i don't even care what's gonna happen right now i'm gonna bookmark you right now and i'm gonna say I, th at this point i feel like this has got to become adopted into the podcast yeah we have to have some sort of tracking system of like where we're going, you know, one of those like mind map Venn di not Venn diagram, but yeah. one of those like little flow charts of like, yeah. bloop, 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 bloop. and then we got to work our way back out. Like we're uh, one of those, um, what are they called? Not hamsters, oh, and not roller rats. coaster. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. Those animals who like not a gopher. They're smaller. Bunnies? They're in the, the they're they're digging holes. Go, 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 Grofers. Go. <laughs> Groundhogs. <laughs> oh, ants. They burrow in little tunnels. 
I had an ant farm once. They all died. <laughs> Everybody's screaming at their at their at their devices. It's a oh a, a, a beaver. No, they run in what they they're in water. They're small. <laughs> they're small, and they're lo- they look like a squirrel, kind of the size of a mouse, but they're longer. Gr- a snake. Go for go for no. no. <laughs> God. Snakes are underground. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been With trying the snake emoji. Oh, do it right now. Oh, don't do no, it. No, no, no. It sucks. <laughs> it's like it sucks. Well, I've been trying to be better at posting bad tweets. It's going well. All right, we got this. Hang on. Let's let's take a deep breath. Groundhog. Okay, actually, you know what? Can I? Can I? Can we get a little bit of like meditative music in here for one second? We need a Dude, moment. This has been. I you just saying that? I realized yeah. it's so easy to forget how tense your body is. Dude, this you is know? good. Uh, uh, anyone listening to us right now? Let's have a little bit of ambient, beautiful music happening. We haven't done this in a while, Andrew, but let's bring in some forest sounds for a second. Mm. And just well, it needs it needs to happen after this charade. We're all grounded. We're speaking about something nice. We're speaking about the butterfly effect, the way that we all affect one another for the positive. Every move that we make affects everything else in the world. Are you sure you're not thinking about a snake? I'm pretty sure I'm not thinking of a snake. Well, what was the point, though? An animal that burrows underground. The point was, even though everybody... Do armadillos burrow underground? (laughs) This thing, if I can show you what this thing looked like, you it's like stop well, can, can, guessing. Can, 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 can you tell me like a movie that it's been in, like Over the Hedge, maybe, or a Pixar film that depicts this animal? Zootopia? Is he in Zootopia? I don't know. It's 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 a imagine a small but like long hamster and a rat combined. <sighs> Let me just look it up real quick. I'm not going to be able to continue this. One more rat. Oh God! No. What is it? Andrew's on his phone right now, looking up little creatures. Jesus, creatures. Naked that- roll mat. Naked. Hold on. Naked roll mat. <laughs> <laughs> Something me at yoga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Naked mole rat popped up, and it like scared the heck out of me. Yeah, Jack Dietrich. You know his little weird cats. And I, I don't mind talking about it. Da- Jack Dietrich. Shade alarm. I'm, I'm, I'm signaling it. Jack Dietrich. Weird cats. Jack Cross Dietrich and Kaylee. Who Jack Dietrich is a wonderful photographer. Kaylee is a musician, and they're they're friends of ours, and they're wonderful. They have these little cats that I think David Dobrik gave him. One of those cats. Both of those oh, cats. Yes. And they don't have hair on their bodies. They look like little maniacs. It's not a ground squirrel, Google. You're not too unlike the animal that you're looking for right now, digging around the internet looking for answers. Both of us, yeah. by definition, are actually literally like the thing I'm looking at because I referenced it as a point of saying we are just like this thing. And we don't see that much sunlight, which is True. a huge problem. We're trying to work I'm on that. I'm taking my vitamin D supplements, Dr. I mean, I mean, for some reason, it seems weirdly vulnerable to say my doctor's name out loud, so I'm just going to bleep it. But I'm all over. I, I, I need to use uh, the restroom just and go number one. <laughs> well, you do that. I'll be looking. I'll be looking. It's not a ground squirrel. Do you know how many members there are in the squirrel family? One day, probably in the middle of recording a podcast, <clears throat> I'm going to drop the mic. And I'm going to call it what it is. And I'm just going to move somewhere and just be a bird watcher. One day. With binoculars. You know how many birds birds there are? I I would like to Google how many birds there are. One time I Googled how many bugs there were. Absolutely shocked. Dude. At the results. Oh, sponsorship mode. It took my breath away for a moment. Oh. Do you see my little hat? See my little hat? Oh, we've got little little hats on. Sponsorship mode. Yes. It's calming. Mm-hmm. People are hearing the tranquil sound of raindrops hitting the rooftop. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, they are. No, yes, no. yes. What are they hearing? <sighs> You're hearing crops in a field. Oh, Andrew, <laughs> you can't do that again. Point is, is that we're in sponsorship mode right now. And do you remember 2020? Yeah. Describe it in a word or a sound. Me. That's right. Mm-hmm. Little follow up sound there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Andrew, after a year of intense, meh, something that should be at the top of all of our lists, I know it's at the top of mine, is being smarter with money. So if you're still paying boatloads of your hard earned cash every month for your phone, what are you doing? Don't you even know about Mint Mobile? As the first company to be selling premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Get out of town. Get in your car right now. Drive out of the town. I won't get out of the town. Get out of the boundaries of what the town is technically. Find where the boundaries are of the town and then go past it at least five feet. No, because I'm telling you the truth. (laughs) Let me tell you more about Mint Mobile. Yes. 
Andrew, with Mint Mobile, you're free as a bird, brother. Oh, is that a bird? Nice. Because all plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Did you know that? Are you actually serious? I'm unlimited actually, unlimited dude, data? You can still have all your contacts, you can what? still use your phone, and you can keep your phone number. What? With Mint Mobile. What? And only pay $15 a month. What the heck are you talking about? I'm talking about the truth. Too good to be true. It's not too good to be true. It's Mint Mobile. <laughs> speaking of too be, do, do, be, do, do, speaking oh. of too good to be true, did you know that if you're not 100% satisfied with Mint Mobile, you're covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee? Long Long time to get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash sweet boys. That is mintmobile.com slash sweet boys. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash sweet boys. Mint Mobile, it's nicer than anything. I'm making up a slogan again. Mint Mobile, it's nicer than the nicest piece of China wear. <laughs> What? Mint Mobile's like, please don't. What? That's like confusing. Dishes? Mint Mobile. Mint's are good for fresh breath. It's also good for a fresh reception. <laughs> no, Mint Mobile is great. Hey, you want to get back to the podcast? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Back to the podcast. Think about this. I know we're getting, we're, we're already, we're already making this, this podcast is already yeah. inherently for the people who want to open up their mind and go, well, so. Is it? This episode. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. butterfly effect. I did re this is a nice thing to talk Whoa! about. Whoa! Whoa! Andrew's got Adelaine Moraine butterflies on his Look at this! Andrew's wearing Ad Adelaine Moraine hoodie. He's got butterflies on his sleeve. Now listen to me when I say these words, but try to convince me that this is a coincidence. I've got no interest in convincing you of anything, brother. Because you believe it's crazy. I do. That is kind of crazy. Me on my wedding day? I do. Sorry. <laughs> I know. I know. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> for, for us. <laughs> you doubling down and not being like ashamed. I know. Um, sorry, I'm wearing a hat today to cover up my stupid hair. I already said that. Um, listen, this, this, when I was uh, in the restroom just now, Andrew, I realized what a crime against humanity this episode is. Yeah. So we will, we will, uh, we're focused. Uh, why were you bringing up the animal that burrows underground? Was there because a reason? Because we, what I was saying was, we are like that. Yeah. And I think that at some point, maybe 20, 30 episodes down the line, yeah. or just why not now, we succumb to the fact that we literally are that animal and we need to do something. We need to put something in place to like retrace our steps. Yeah. You know, I, I, I see it, you know, when you were when in science class and they were showing you like what the earth looks like and then you can see the grass, the first layer oh, of whatever. Oh, I love those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'll see put, the soil and the crust yeah, of the earth. Yeah, you see soil. Oh, yeah. That's us. And, we're in, and, I, and I see us oh. like that ground squirrel slash prairie dog moving around in and out and like left and right and we need to be able to know where we were what little streets we went down okay. and i want to know that so i don't know if this is going to require us finding somebody to like be here keep us on track while simultaneously animating a graphic of us like doing that it's a whole thing Whoa, it's going to be a whole thing that's actually kind of an interesting topic and i really re mean this of if we did have like a third person in here like who would that be like an actual sort of like producery type of person that maybe it. That is on so many levels so rude to our Wait. actual producer that's right oh. there. I cannot believe Andrew. He's right there. Andrew's commitment to this uh, that this this joke that Rila Kuma is that yeah. his name is our producer who by the way is not there. <laughs> He's li I'm looking in this direction, Andrew. He will be eventually, maybe. But that is kind of funny to think about. Who would that be? Baby Yoda's also over there. He's taking a nap now underneath, that, underneath the cabinets. Our podcasts always start a little bit wild, but perhaps we can get this one to a more human place. Is there anything to talk about today that I think that, that, that would be kind of nice and grounding, actually? It's Valentine's Day, so maybe Andrew and I are feeling a bit heady. Maybe we're all over the place. Maybe this is a form of escapism. Who's to say? Mm -hmm. let's, let's do this right now to ground ourselves. Was there anything earlier that we were speaking about that we want to return to? Because if not, we can set sail in a different direction. Yes, plenty of things. Okay. The Starbucks cup. Yeah. So <clears throat> here's the thing. Okay. Are you talking about how you get shocked by everything for no reason and you produce like a weird amount of electricity as a human? <laughs> it, it's, it is true. It is eerie. Well, Andrew I was gets... referring to the fact that whenever I drink my coffee, it shocks me. And I don't know. It's just the first... It's just the first sip. It's very strange. Andrew gets like shocked by stuff a lot. I don't know what that means. Is there some like spiritualist in the Part comments? of me wants to get up right now and yeah. touch the camera and just prove it. And everybody's just going to be like, what the heck is I, that? I know. But it's going to hurt so bad. When Andrew gets shocked. Should I do it? Should I get up and no, touch the camera no, 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 right no, no, now? No, no, it's fine. Oh my gosh. Oh. When Andrew gets shocked. Oh it's my like gosh. A, it's a huge production. This is going to. Just do it. He, you're going to hear a lot of bleeping. Dude, if I actually get shocked right now.
Of course. Of course. <laughs> you didn't get shocked? No. It didn't shock me, which is funny. Well, I know because you didn't scream. I'm on to you, electrons and, um, um, you know, the things that come together and, uh, you know, uh, what is it? What, what, what branch of, of subject is Are you exposing shocked? atoms right now? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Andrew's <Yeah>. exposing matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, what is it? Is it, is it, it it's, it's electrons. What, pr- I, I, we were trying to focus here. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, I'm actually wondering. Yeah. It's science, but what is the subgenre slash sub subject of whatever it is that I'm referring to? The electricity, the, the shocking. I, but I do feel like it's my civic uh, duty, and as your podcast co host, to shut that down and go, you know what? We'll look it up later. We will Electri- look it up. Electricity. <laughs> what is the freaking ground squirrel thing? Shoot. Crud. Shoot. Okay, listen. Crap. Andrew. Freaking heck. <gasps> Dang it. Crud. No, crud in a hole. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> like, weirdly, not a cuss word that sounds awful. Okay, l- like, we got this, man. The t- the t- the t- okay, let me wrap up the, the, the TikTok chef thing. There's, I love watching people cook things on TikTok. There's so there's a couple people um there's a couple people on there. I just followed somebody the other day. Ooh, can we call out our favorite TikTok cookers? Um Sam Seats. Sorry, his name is Sam Way and and his and his handle is Sam Seats. You know how there's a bunch of people who cook stuff on TikTok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and when the first time I saw it, I was I was almost confused. Yeah. He basically cooks things in a way where he, you know, he'll chop something or he'll blend something. Yes. And then he'll, you know, uh, scrape stuff into a bowl. And that all makes sounds, right? Okay. Like, yeah. and it's just, it's just this rhythm yeah. of sounds. It's like, and it's like, wait, and then he makes it into music? No, it's just the way that he shows his cooking. Oh, that's incredible. And it's just boom, 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 boom. It is so visually and auditorily stimulating that it's, I just, wa- I just went through them all. I can't find my guy. There's this guy that I'm in. He's like the most perfect human. Me I've looking ever seen. for my Uber. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, there's this. There's this. Uh, there's this cook on TikTok that I love, and he has this really cool. Um, Moody Foodie. What is it? The guy who was a contestant on MasterChef. Who, I don't think so. But also, I don't know that much about MasterChef. Like, Let's make Tim pour, and he no. throws his knife in the cutting board. <laughs> no, he's like the most beautiful human on the planet. And he lives in this crazy like studio. It's like this. It's like oh, everything. Yes. He, do, I know who you're talking about. Do you know who I'm yeah, talking but about? I don't know what his name is. I love him. But he's, oh yeah, I'll always, every once in a while, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll send Garrett a cooking video and I'll say, um, teacher, no eating. In, I'll send Garrett a text that says, <laughs> yeah. teacher, no eating in class, kids in the back. Yeah. And then, and then the TikTok. That's and, Andrew's favorite meme format. I love it so is the, much. Uh, the, the people eating a fest and then kids in the back of the classroom. <laughs> It's very funny. That's, it, it, that's it, one of those like school throwback things that really does just it, elicit the most humor out of me. You know, because the whole thing is the teachers say, oh, oh no, no eating in class, but the kids in the back, the teacher can't see them, so it, they'll have snacks. But the internet has sort of memefied the idea of the kids in the back are like making, you know, like pot roast and breaking out, you know, different, you know, co- pans. It hits it's every not time. It's actually happening. It hits every time, though. But the point is, yeah. boom. <laughs> Um, the point is, I wanted to front load my love for TikTok chefs just so I people understood that I that I do stand this genre. But yeah. I will say, there's about a thirty percent in the 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 TikTok chef arena, okay, who are just like like weirdly just condescending. Oh, there's like a yeah, you there's a woman who like yells. It's like today we're making pasta. Get over it. Well, <laughs> it's like no, it's like the craziest. Well, we, thing ever. I think both of us love her, but 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 well, she's it, our queen, of course. Well, she's yeah, our she's, she's queen. Yeah. <laughs> She is, but she, 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 yeah. Well, no, but I'm not even referring to her because yeah. that's sort of this sort of maternal, like, that's like. Today you, we're making lemonade. Give me a break. <laughs> it's like that kind of thing. That's she's like, like aggressive. That's like, there, there's, there's a, a, a hue of love behind her words. Oh, she's maternal. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, ma, you give me a hard time, but you love me. Yeah. That's like someone yelling at you for not eating enough. It's like, oh. We're making uh, pasta sauce. Get <laughs> <laughs> She's just very funny. There's no, there's no, there's no way to do that like a service. To, like, oh yeah, we, I can't explain. The it, shade alarm couldn't even go off if it tried during us saying that. Rila, Rila's over there. He's 
Andrew, I need to explain this, Andrew. You've done this so many times that I have to just say it. Rilakkuma is a, a little Japanese bear figure that's really cute that Andrew has back in his office that he assumes is the producer of this podcast because he wants to set him up in a little producer booth, which I am all about, and I can't wait for that to happen. But the fact of the matter is that it hasn't happened yet. Well, when I come back here and I film <laughs> Rilakkuma posted up in the corner with a headset and I p- splice it in here, people are going to think that Andrew. you're... Off, a delusional. Off, yeah, yeah. They're going to be like, yeah, I see it, Garrett. What are you doing? I want that to happen so bad. It's going to take a lot more effort, but at the end of the day, I think I'll be glad that I did it. Now, I hope that that happens. I hope that we're seeing really Kuma. The 30%, um, the TikTok chefs. No, I'm talking about people who are yeah, like hard to watch because you're, you're watching it and you're going, what are you doing? Oh, why, I know what why, you mean. Why, why are you even oh, yeah, posting there was- this to the community of people when you're so weirdly defensive and... Andrew showed me this perfect example of this and it was a guy who said uh, oh yeah he was like making spaghetti or something and he said yeah he was like making spaghetti he was putting the ingredients together and he said yeah it's called spaghetti sauce not ketchup grow up <laughs> or something like that and he like a lot said of, there's a lot of that but but I'm thinking of somebody who like getting in front of comments or something I'm thinking so, of, <laughs> grow up somebody who's what they're just maybe it's just a weird weird form of like modern day insecurity manifesting or something it's people saying things like, yeah, I know exactly where I'm going with this. Yeah. <laughs> like two eggs. Like, you don't need to use two hands when you're cracking an egg. <laughs> like, you, I've tried. Like, oh, I, I've i tried to crack an egg with one hand. Yeah. Okay. To the person who's yelling at me to crack an egg with one hand, here's my response. Okay. You can crack an egg with one hand. I've seen you do it. No, but yeah, no, but in terms of, okay. I'm taking off my hat, by the way. My hair looks stupid. Sorry about it. I'm taking off my hat. It's becoming a pain in my you know what. The guy, he, 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 he's, you, you know, he was saying, um, you know, whatever the heck it was, making pasta or something like that. Yeah. You know, he's like, you know, like, roll, roll it out. Okay. Add a little <laughs> bit of flour. Dash of salt. One egg. You don't need to use two hands. And I'm like, okay. So then the next day, yeah. I said, let me just absorb what he said i don't need to use two hands interesting yeah let me try to do it with one like um, it kind of a mess like listen here's the thing i get it i've only done it once you get over time no i like practice i said i said no this guy must 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 have something is this one of those things where when you start driving a car you use both feet and then someone says just use one foot and then you go oh my gosh i can't believe that i did it with two feet yeah Weirdly accurate analogy because I was thinking, well, maybe if I just practice cracking an egg with one hand enough over time, I'll say, I can't believe that I used to crack an egg with two hands. And guess what? Over time, it just got weirder. I was like, sounds like me with Charles. (gasps) Over time, it just got weirder. I know. Okay. Dare I suggest, might I suggest a theory alarm? Sure. Ooh, theory alarm. The aggressive cooks. On TikTok, because that is definitely a thing. I feel like anyone who's seen people cook on TikTok understands. But not only aggressive. Yeah. Weirdly. Condescending. Yes. I think, and this is why the theory alarm was just called, was because Chef Gordon Ramsay might have seeded that idea with the butterfly effect so deeply into the universe that not to say that people are impersonating him or even thinking about this, but Mm. they might be like, oh, no. I mean, dude, who is more iconic and, and seen than Chef Gordon Ramsay. It, it even, I, I don't even like, I've never even seen that show and I know exactly what he's like. Let so me, maybe he's Let me very, very quickly explain yeah. to you on an objective level why you're pro- possibly right yeah. and why that also makes the whole thing unbearable. Chef Gordon Ramsay can kind of do that and it'd be charming because he's an expert. He's been around oh. for like, oh, I've been cooking for 40 years. It's just some crazy... I- it, Put that spatula down, you little piece of, you little dog Ted, you little piece of a monster. You put that spatula down. You've never even cooked an egg, have you, you little cheese head? He, yeah, so he could say something like that. And it's like, oh, he knows what he's doing. It's like, you know, it's, somebody has a job at like a crazy law firm or something and everybody around the office is like scared of the CEO. Yeah. But when you're around them, it's like, well, yeah, but they're the best. Yeah. That's what they do. There's like a charming flair to that sort of a little, 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 little tent of yeah. charm there. Oh, I, he's very charming. Have you seen him with kids? He's so good with well, kids. Well, I know that's another thing too. Yeah, it's all probably Gordon Ramsay, realistically in real life too, is probably he's probably an angel. Yeah, he's probably like the sweetest guy ever. Which, it's, it's all it's it all, all person. makes sense. But when you're coming up here and all you've ever done was 
you know, made me- some eggs on TikTok. I'll wrap it up. There was somebody on TikTok one time. Wrap it were- up. Me with my breakfast burrito. Sorry. Me with my presents to myself. Oh, that's on so Valentine's nice. Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew, I'll get you a present for Valentine's Day. Um. <laughs> oh, you ever had this candle by Mac Does It that I'm giving oh, you right now? All right. <laughs> I'm good. The smell of a Mac Does It candle will put me in a good mood. And I'm oh. back. Hey, let me give it a sniff. I'm, I'm a, I don't have, I'm a down Valentine's Day too. Not me thinking about bringing my Mac Does It candle on the airplane to help me with my turbulence anxiety. Anyway. Ooh, uh, turbulence is scary. Oh, sponsorship. Oh, sponsorship mode just made me yawn, which or is like weird. Spidership mode. Oh. I just thought about that right now. Spidership mode? Sponsorship mode? Spidership? That'd be f- sick. Ooh, but scary creepy. It's like a movie called Spidership. I'd watch that literally. I wouldn't... I, 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 I got a ship full of spiders. I got a ship full of spiders. I don't even know... I don't even care what the movie would be about. It just sounds sick. It would be about a ship full of spiders. Or a ship that has eight legs and can like run around. Oh, now that is so much cooler. But more importantly, Andrew, focusing here, I eat the same old things all the time. I want variety. I want options. I want fun. Me too. I want economical, healthy eating, but I don't know where to begin. You do know about HelloFresh, right? You do know about this. Oh, uh, America's number one meal kit? You see, it sounds like you have a lot of insight into their uh, well, the company, yeah. Well, now that I think about it, they do deliver fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering recipes delivered right to your door. Yeah. In fact, HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Yeah, that's exactly what you need. Also, the phone in front of you. You're no. reading off of it. No. I'm just a little confused. You no, didn't no, know no. about this, no, 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 and then no, no. you knew about it oh, no, no, because no, you no. have it right in front of you. Real talk, Andrew. Real talk. Okay. Shifting into reality. You ever heard of it? I had fish last night. I had a piece of beautiful fish last night from HelloFresh. Cooked it over an open fire. Absolutely wonderful. You texted me about it. I got I a text from him. At like, at like 1 a.m. or something? No. Wasn't it? No, it was like 8 p.m. Oh, 1 a.m., 8 p.m. You know what matters, Andrew? Is that HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and trips to the grocery store. And I ain't lying. And I ain't talking the, uh, and I ain't lying. And I ain't talking the cat of the jungle. The cat of the jungle. Of yeah. course, everybody knows the lion's called the cat of the jungle. That's what they call him. The jungle? As legend says. Are lions even in the jungle? Yep. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think they're predominantly in the jungle. Oh, enough, enough. about lions, Andrew. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. And Andrew, if people are going, I want to experience HelloFresh, well, good news. People can go to HelloFresh.com slash SweetBoys and use code SweetBoys10 for 10 10 free meals, including free shipping. Did you hear that? 10 free meals of people. Double digits? Double digits, are you, brother. Are you talking more than nine? One zero You're talking free about meals. the 10 that's above the nine? I'm talking about the 10 that's above the nine and before the 11. <laughs> Ooh, that was pretty good math on my part. <laughs> oh my God. Well, it was. <laughs> pretty good math. HelloFresh.com slash SweetBoys10 and use code SweetBoys10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Good stuff. Oh, you know what I just remembered, Andrew? Remembered? You mean what you just read off your phone or what you will read off your phone in two seconds? Is that Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. So we talk about both here on this podcast. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. People can use both for more variety and value. This all adds up. And I ain't talking about me and my accounting class. Oh, cool. Yikes. What's this? (sighs) What'd you do? Nothing. Why did I feel? I did nothing. I felt something weird. Yeah, we better get out of here. Back to the podcast. So the TikTok thing was basically like the guy was making pancakes okay. and he said, and I kid you not, he was making pancakes. Yeah. And he said, okay, so we're going to, we're going to add the eggs. And of course, did it with one hand. I roll alarm with the one hand. Like I get it. That's cool. If you do with the one hand. Did thing. you just introduce a new alarm? Yes, sir. Because here's the thing. If you want to crack eggs with one hand, that's fine. But if you're going to show it off in my face and make me think that I'm impressed by that, guess what? Not going to happen because there's people out there grinding, putting in their 10,000 hours, cracking eggs, one hand left and right. Like it ain't nothing doing it behind their back, cracking it with their freaking toes probably. And you're over here showing it in my face. Like, see, aren't you impressed? No, believe me that everything I do from here on is like legit. Cause I cracked an egg with one hand not going to happen. Point is, what he said is he cracked the egg in there and he goes, okay, now instead of flour, we're going to put bananas because we're not four years old. 
he was that aggressive. We're not going to put flour and sugar in here because we're not four. Oh, I can't believe he did that. Are I you said, serious? Listen, guy, just because you're in your whole bodybuilding.com forum phase where you're going down the line and all you're doing is saturating yourself with yeah. how you can get freaking yoked and jacked and make Cynthia come back to you, guess what? Not going to happen, buddy. Cynthia's with someone else She's now. moved on, and yeah. Brad, he treats her well. Dude, <laughs> Brad is the kind of guy with Cynthia who, like, dude, he, yeah, he, like, comes, she, she like, comes into the room and she goes, hey, what's that sound? She hears crackling. He made a fire. Do you think that like Cynthia? Do you th a think that Cynthia thinks about you at all because now she's moved on with Brad? But also, do you think that she's going to care about the fact that you're getting like toned up because of your banana pancakes? Also, even if she did, in some one percent chance world, she'd go into your TikTok and be like, "Oh, that's a really condescending recipe that you're like dishing out to these kids." Weird. Yeah. Plus, weird thing to say, but no matter how many squats he does, Brad's got a better ass. <laughs> He does. Like, I can see it. I, he just does. He, like, looks way better in jeans, and he knows it. Point is, not a fan of condescending TikTok. Also, that's, like, making... That's making kids on the app think that, like, oh, they're better than they are. Because <laughs> yeah, it cuts out, like, a four-year-old watching that. Okay, we're not four. Like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my God. If, if if somebody ever finds a TikTok like that where someone says, we're not going to put, you know, we're not going to put uh, real peanut butter in here because we're not six. And a six-year-old <laughs> stitched that together. And it was, he was like follow, he was like looking at another phone, looking at it, and goes, oh. oh, okay, fine. And then just globs of peanut butter in the recipe going, well, that would, dude, that would hit that so hard. That is so funny. Hey, six-year-olds, it's TikTok. <laughs> So, so, somebody listening to that pancake recipe, okay, we're not going to put you know flour and sugar here because you're not four years old. And a four-year-old just looking at the phone and, and looking over the mixing bowl and just dumping like a whole thing of flour in the bowl. Here's actually some pretty specific. Someone with, with a younger sibling or a cousin or something should definitely recreate that TikTok. You know, tag us in it on Twitter. Let us see it. I think it's a great idea, Andrew. Like, and uh, and also listen yes yes maybe that was that was full of shade in some way which I think is more than warranted because we want to be promoting the idea of not being a condescending um you know it's bad taste and people perpetuate that yeah. oh, po 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 point <laughs> point <laughs> no shade to that person who made that TikTok because listen you're just trying to find your way you're trying to figure out your groove and what you do and what you post I get it yeah but maybe just be cooler about it. Maybe just say, yeah. hey, we're going to put bananas in here instead of flour and sugar because, and then maybe put a, like, a little graph on the screen of the benefits of that and maybe yeah. go into it. You can even be a little, a little. you can have your edge to you. There was a you girl. You can have your little aggressive edge to you. Oh, that's funny. This, you seen this guy on TikTok? He's, he's a little, he's like Gordon Ramsay. Cool, but don't be like, we're not four. I've got something really nice to tell people. I think this is like, I, I got really excited when I thought of this because I was like, oh, when I heard that as a human, that made me feel so much better about living in this world. Do you want to hear what it is? Yeah. It's a, it's truly a sweet boy's thought. I was sitting next to a pilot once on a plane and uh, the, your turbulence thought made me think of this. The nice thought is that wait, he... you're a co-pilot. Andrew! Wait, wait, you fly planes too? You're oh in the my cockpit? God. Well, why else would you be sitting next to the pilot in a plane? Sorry, I'm done. I'm sorry. I didn't buy... I'm putting my microphone down. I, I, I was just going to say, it truly is a nice thought. I asked the pilot, I was like, hey, you know, I was probably being a little bit annoying, but I respectfully asked him, I think I was like 17 or something. I was like, do you mind if I ask you like a couple questions about planes that I'm really curious about? And he was like, yeah, dude, of course. And then I said, like, what would happen if one of the engines just yeah. shut off right now in this yeah. plane? And he said, and I could tell he was actually interested. He said, well, what do you think would happen? And I was like, dude, awful. I was like that scene out of like yeah. Fight Club or Final Destination, just like plummeting to the ground, you know? And he was like, okay, interesting. And he said, what do you think, what do you think would happen if both of the engines shut off? And I said, plummet. <laughs> I was like, it'd be the scariest thing in the yeah, world. Yeah. And he was like, let me tell you a story. He said, when I was in flight school, the guy who was training me, while we were flying at like 30,000 feet, reached over and flipped off one of the engines. Mm, mm -hmm. And do you know how long it took me to realize that he had done that? And I was like, no, how long? He's like 20 minutes. And then he said, and then as an exercise, he like flipped off the other engine, I think. And then, you know, he told me because it was a little more, you know, whatever, unsettling. And then he was like, but still the plane, nothing yeah. would happen. It would just coast through the air because of the way planes work. That made me feel so much better as a person who rides on a lot of planes. Flight. Person with flight anxiety, such as myself, who is about to hear something that's going to make them feel a little bit better about getting on a plane, it might make it a little bit easier for you to travel more yeah. once, of course, everything is over because getting on a plane, I don't know. But if it's not necessary, you don't want to do it. Alarm. Right there. Right there. No, that's a good thing. I think that those things do make me feel better. Can I tell you a, a fear that I have? I've got a couple of strange fears. Um, I do, you know, the scary, as I will ride. it's a sweet fear and doesn't make anybody fearful. No, it won't make anyone fearful. One time, a bunch of businessmen, uh, I got in a cab with them. 
It's just a real story. Sorry, I was in New York. A bunch? Yeah. They were was it like, a limo cab? It was like an SUV thing, and there were like five of them. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I get in your cab? Because I was like really broke, because it never hurts to ask. And they were like, yeah, sure. Whoa. Because they were going like where I needed to go, like in Brooklyn. Point is... I, they were uh, they were going to a conference, and I was like, because I was talking to them in the cab because they were cool enough to let me ride with them. Yeah, and I said, uh, I said, I said, what are you guys doing in New York? And they said, oh, we're going to like a like a conference. And I said, oh, that's interesting. What what do you, what's your guys' trade? And he was like, oh, we're elevator engineers. He was like, we all meet once a year. And I said, perfect. Because somewhere deep down in my heart, I had always wanted to be in a cab with a bunch of elevator engineers. And so I said, great, let me ask you something. And they said, we know what you're going to ask. I said, really? They said, yeah, you're going to ask about elevator crashes. And I was like, brilliant. So a lot of people asked. They said, yes. And they said, let me just get in front of it right now and tell you what happens. He said, elevators that are made past the year like 1910 cannot crash. He was like, that's not a thing. He's like, the standards have been set in place to a, to a way that when the, there's a sense of them going down, there's like all these locking mechanisms that instantly go in place. Really? So he was like, e elevators plummeting to the ground. He's like, outside of maybe very broke third world countries or, you know, ancient, ancient elevators. He said, that does not happen and cannot happen. I was like, whoa. He said the, the most that could happen is you would feel a little jolt. He's like, it, it might fall like a foot or something, but he, that he's just like, that would just feel like a little judder. Isn't that amazing? A guy, a guy who doesn't understand how to <laughs> per, like propel conversations in the right direction. Yeah. Okay, but like, what, a tower, what about Tower Terror? Uh I think no, I I'm, just, I'm just saying, like it like falls. Oh uh, yeah, but Andrew, so uh, well, that's like just, it like falls down. Yeah, but the, the, like it doesn't lock. Yeah, but that's just a ride. So you know, it's it's, it's engineered to do that. It's like an elevator, though. So you're like a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to say uh, a pilot, an elevator engineer, made me feel a little bit safer about existing in this world. So if you're on a plane, the engines go out. Guess what? You probably wouldn't even know. If you're on an elevator, it plummets. Guess what? It can't. Knowing how anxious people's minds work, great. So I won't even know about it. <laughs> <laughs> great. Oh, the engines will be going. I don't even know. Oh, no. <laughs> Andrew can say that. Andrew can say this. Because of anxiety. Uh, yeah. What if I had a tattoo on the back of my hand? Tattoos! I'm so afraid of them. I, I, can I get... get... No, 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 oh, no, whoa. no, no, We're going to stay right here. All right. <laughs> I'm so, quote, afraid of them. I am. Indulge me on what that means well, specifically. Go ahead. Well, I feel like I've been talking for too long. Ugh, but okay, I'll tell you something. Jack Dietrich FaceTimed me the other day. Friend of ours, Jack Dietrich, wonderful guy. I've already spoken about him if it made the cut. Him and his Jack ghoulish, Dietrich alarm. Him and his <laughs> Jack Dietrich alarm is a pretty good thing, actually. Uh, we Sorry. spoke about his ghoulish cats. And uh, and yeah, so Jack Dietrich, he, he FaceTimed me and showed me this new tattoo he got of a fish wearing a dorsal fin, right? Very excited yeah, about it. Yeah, I saw that. It's cool. I know. And I said to him, man, I wish I could be a guy who gets tattoos. He was like, why don't you? Just do it. I said, nah, I can't. Something about the way that my arm looks, just like my, my skin, as my skin, I, I'm very attached to it. It's very strange. Like, I, I, seeing something underneath my skin, and I know this is an impractical fear. I know there's people, hundreds of people listening with tattoos, maybe even thousands. And, uh, and uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. Something about just my skin as my skin is something I'm, like, weirdly married to. If there was something under it, like a design, I feel like it would, get, like, make me freak out. Like, I would want to, like, erase it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I know this no, doesn't make sense because no, no, everyone no, no, has tattoos. It, 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 that, I will say, yes, that's an interesting perspective on it. And I, I don't think it. I've actually heard before. I see what you're saying. I love you, you, tattoos. You're, you're looking at you're looking at your skin. You're seeing the tattoo. Yeah, and and you start shaking your arm. It, it, it would because make you me, think yeah. that you have to do what you what you only know to do. Once you shake it like an edge of sketch and Andrew, get the tattoo off, the you. weirdest direction ever. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is so right. Wait, wait. You're you're like oh I'd have to like erase it yeah you'd you'd probably like want it like an etch a sketch when you want to when you want to set it back I mean this it's... couldn't be more appropriate of an analogy you're looking at something and you want it to go away yeah and there's part of you like looking at an etch a sketch when you want to hit the reset button and erase it yeah. you almost wish that you could just shake it off but guess what it's ink and it's underneath your skin and it's permanent and you're gonna have to go to the doctor laser man and he's gonna have to go t -t 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 and you're gonna be like ah! And it's going to look like it's gone until the receptionist says, by the way, that was one of seven treatments that you have to do. We'll see you next Friday. And you're like, oh, great. I thought this was a one-time thing. It looks like it's gone. And then, sure enough, later that day, you're like, oh, shucks, it's back, and it's 80% there. That's why I got the seven treatments. You know, everything I'm saying is right, ET phone home. <laughs> I touched Garrett's finger with my finger. Go ahead. Go ahead. Taylor Swift. 
<laughs> Shake it off. <up>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my I, God. I was hanging on to it for so long, it almost got too heavy. Do you know what I'm about to ask you? We're talking about tattoos. That's a cliche question about tattoos. Do yeah, you know yeah, I would do a little ghost. Andrew, I would get, oh, if I got a tattoo, I would get this little forest spirit from this uh, Hayao Miyazaki movie that I like, a little anime. And uh, so it looks like a little ghost. And I would also do uh, the sword from Kill Bill on the back of my hands, much like Scotty Sire. I would just cop his tattoo idea, to be honest. Oh. What would you do if you got a tattoo? And where would it be? <gasps> we get tattoos together. Sorry, where do you put your ghost? Oh, I never even thought about it. My forehead. <laughs> the weird. No, I don't know where I put my little ghost. Uh, probably just on the back of my hand again. A back of your hand. I love the idea. But you're, you're, but that, that you're, you're accentuating your main problem with getting a tattoo is that you're seeing it constantly and you're thinking that it shouldn't be there. Listen, I love my hand. I don't know if I want to freaking put a tattoo on it. I get so scared, but maybe it look cool. I. What would you do? As you'll see here, I've, I've, I've um, moved my sleeve to my elbow. Yeah. As to show you, I do think it would be on a slant, and I feel like it would be on my forearm. Right there. Oh, right, nice. Right, right there. What would I, it be? I don't know. I think like a word or two or three. Craftopia. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Craftopia. Listen. Listen, if HBO wants to... Listen, you call, <gasps> you can call my agent. Andrew, I, uh, body modifications are just a wild thing. I was wondering, should I buzz a little little fun little design line mm. or two in yeah. the side of my... Well, I think head. you should do a little heart like Drake. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? That's funny. In a Super Bowl commercial, right here, I could do it myself. Right here, oh, like, like right, like right there. Yeah, that'd like be cool. Something. I'd love that. Like Who little... cares? It's just hair it grows back. I don't know. I love body modifications on other people. I just want to go on record and say I think they're beautiful on other people, and I'm obsessed yeah, with them. Man. I just don't know about from myself. It would be cool. It would be cool to put yeah. just a really basic piece of very good, well aging advice on my forearm that I can look down and just be like, Yeah, yeah, it would be weird. I don't know. You know about little, little Uzi Vert putting a diamond in his head, Andrew? I know a bit about it. I know that this tea at this moment is probably room temperature. But uh, but I, I, I've been thinking a lot about that recently, the logistics of, set, of, of, this, uh, of, this, of this thing. Lil Uzi Vert is a musical artist who apparently has bought and somehow installed on his forehead a very expensive diamond of sorts. Yes. Is this all factual? Yeah, apparently, it's a twenty-four million dollar gem that he had inserted into his forehead. I think about this so much. And by the way, for my vision stands out there, much like the Power Stone in Vision's head. And if it's not the Power Stone in Vision's head, I am sorry. I think it is the Power Stone, though. So it just looks like he has a giant earring almost on his head. Interesting way to put it. Well, I just don't know how else to like convey that image to people we're talking about jewelry we're talking about on the yes. face in his forehead like straight up like between his eyes like right in the center of his like forehead the, where the th quote third eye is that oh maybe that's the idea how clever that's the idea love that EYE. love that for us <laughs> sorry um but the uh the 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 yeah i think it's i think it's a little bit scary because like a guy walking around worth 24 million dollars it's a little bit scary imagine he goes to the club someone snatches it or they punch him in the back of the head and say, give me your gem. That's scary. Okay, now, now I, I, I would hope that before he goes out to the club, you know, once clubs are back open, that he uses a falsy, a fake one. He leaves the, the 24 million one at home. I mean, this really could and should be not only its own podcast episode, but its own podcast. We should be talking about this more because there's a lot there. I think about... Like... Uh, I, well, I just, I, I just wonder... Criminals. I just wonder if, if the angle... With getting that installed, because that's of course the first thing. I mean, I yeah. don't even uh, it's like my vacuum. I like make sure like oh, that's not gonna fall over. I don't want that to like <laughs> like break or whatever. You're very specific with the placement Dyson. of the vacuum. Got it on sale. Anyway, point is, yeah. <clears throat> the point is, when it comes to things that are above a couple hundred dollars that you own that you want to have, whatever. Yeah, there's an element of like, oh, be careful. The vacuum was a really bad analogy because I. I thinking of things that you're carrying around on a day-to-day -day basis, like, you know, like a, um, yeah. Not, like what, what, what is something like that? Um, a, a wallet, uh, a cell phone, a smartphone, an iPhone, <laughs> uh, a credit card, a bracelet, a watch, oh, a jewelry. Here you go. So if you have, for instance, a painted stone, a backpack, Oh, or something that yes. has a MacBook Air 2019 edition. Pretty nice, pretty nice. <laughs> it's like you know, twelve hundred dollars worth on like if you were to sell it on eBay. Do you have a nice thousand? Yeah, yeah, thousand. Yeah. Okay, okay. One, one 
All right. You have a yeah. You have a backpack. I'm indulging myself in podcast mode, which I forgot to turn on. There we go. Um, no, if you have a backpack yeah. and then you have you know something in there that's worth like a thousand dollars or something, there's that sort of element of needing to hover over it. Oh, I'm going to the bathroom. Watch my backpack. Yeah. Because there's something worth a thousand dollars in it. Yeah. Don't want anybody to see it. Aww. Perhaps they snatch it. Do you remember that asking strangers in coffee shops to watch your stuff while you go oh, to the bathroom? That's a, that's a great tweet. That is like an A plus tweet. I miss. Asking my friends to watch my stuff. I, I did strangers. Strangers in coffee shops. Hey, Fit. can you watch my stuff? Yeah, that's cool. Because you had like this weird rapport. Basically Even though you never said anything to them, you were like, mm-hmm. you know, next yeah. to them. I miss people. I miss people. I know. I know. Oh, I want to kiss someone on the freaking lips. Well, it is Valentine's Day. Ah! <sighs> ah! The Bone Spider was going to give you a uh, friendly kiss on the wrist. I let him do it. Here's the thing. Where are you going to go from here? <laughs> Where am I going to go from here? I don't know. Ask my guidance counselor. Oh. Oh. I did it. I, 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 Many I, a times, got to make sure my credits are right because you know you hear those horror stories of people saying, "Oh shoot, I thought that I had that elective done, but that only counted towards this bachelor of science, and I actually got a bachelor of arts." So guess what? One short, and I got to wait around a whole nother semester. Hopefully, I can get that online easy class and knock it out. You know how people in, 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 in school were meant to choose their classes and stuff, Andrew? They would, like, have a moment before, like, the term started where yeah. it's like, oh, did you go to the office like, and, like, co- choose like your... High school? Yes. Kind of. And in college, too. College, yeah. More so college, yes. I remember doing that in college. Yeah. Choosing your class. Obviously, you're yeah. paying for your class. You're choosing them. But in high school, we had that, too, where it was like, oh, yeah, go and make sure you've, like, signed up for your the classes. The electives, yeah. The electives. Yeah. I never, ever, ever consciously did that. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, what'd you do? And I was like, I don't know. They were like, what do you mean you don't well, know? Well, I think they to... almost like just put you, I don't even remember that. I, but I, I never did anything. And I remember everyone, like some teacher one day was like, what do you mean you never did that? And they were like, how do you know what class? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I guess they just got like assigned to me. Yeah. Like, I'm sure they just have like someone's job who's like these lazy people who never show up to do this. Just like put them wherever. Well, yeah, they, you probably got, I'm assuming you got I, I put don't... in some very unfun classes. No way. I had a cooking class. I made blueberry muffins with my friend Katie. Shout out to Katie with the blueberry muffins. Oh. Um, Lizzie Vert. Oh, yeah. As far as putting the backpack down and asking someone to watch it, that's a thing. That's like a universal thing. Oh, what about little Lizzie Vert doing that? Well, no, I'm just saying people do that with things like that. Yeah, you can't. Can you imagine you do that with a $24 million stone? My point is people do that with anything that's like above any value, especially if it looks like it's of value. So just imagine something that's really, really expensive that by definition looks expensive because that's the whole point. Fabergé egg. Well, we're talking about the thing. Yeah, sure. I'm talking about Lil Uzi Vert's diamond in his head. $24 million diamonds. It just, see, I, okay, my, my, my actual point is, point is alarm, mm-hmm. is I wonder if the, the, the element of him getting that was sort of to provoke that conversation yeah. of... How does that work? You're going to go around and you're going to be carrying this really expensive thing in your head. Have you thought about the logistics, the potential repercussions? Is it to make people think like, whoa, that's a move there? I mean, no one's ever done anything like that, right? So it is a little mind-boggling. We are sitting here talking about it. We're giving it the stage here. Yeah, I read an article about how it was like put in there, and apparently it's with magnets was this guy's theory. Oh, and, 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 and when, oh when, I hate it. And when I thought that, obviously you know where my mind went. Terrifying. You pluck that out of his, out of Lil Uzi Vert's skull. You sell that market out. You sell it to the black market. How do you insert a magnet in someone's head and then make that stay there? I don't know, Andrew. This is the questions that the world has. That's a, this is what little Uzi Vert wants us to talk about. I know. I I, I think it's I, it just scares me. I just hope he's safe. I just hope he's safe. Lil Uzi Vert realistically probably walks around with a pretty good security guard. I went two. to a soul food place a couple uh, months and months ago, actually. And uh, yeah, and uh, uh, Tyler, the creator, was there. And this girl came up and said, can I get a photo? And he was really nice. He was like very like, oh, you know, he was being really cool about it. But they had this big bodyguard next to him that was like, no photos. Whoa. I was like, whoa. So it was kind of a funny dynamic. That's so crazy. Because yeah. he seemed real. I've, I've actually seen, that's like the, I, anyone who lives in LA can probably agree with this. I don't think there's any celebrity that I've seen out and about more than Tyler the Creator. There's like 17 of him in LA running around all the time. He's very like active in the city. Bodyguards. He took a picture with her anyways, Who though. gets a bot? I'm just trying to think like. But she was very pretty. When you see the paparazzi photos. Maybe that's why. There's paparazzi videos of obviously giant, like Justin Bieber, for instance, which I referenced before. Yeah. On this pod. Justin, um, Justin, can I get a picture with you? 
But sometimes he's not with a bodyguard at all. So I just wonder what makes, and I understand that going to events or something like that, maybe you're more apt to have one or maybe you're less apt. I don't know. I think I'm, they're oh just, my I think, gosh, no, I have I, no idea. I think people like Justin Bieber have bodyguards, but I think they're just keeping their distance. You see that all the time to where like, I bet Justin could just be like, hey, can you just like hang back like like 50 feet? It's fine. This is safe. Like, Yeah, I just wonder when, when, do, when do celebs? Um, oh yeah, make that choice. Yeah, because I'm sure it's you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a tag. I mean, I, I I objectively know to some degree it's a, it's like a text or a call, and it's like hey, like you know, come by like tomorrow, like we're doing this thing. But what triggers the 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 need for the bodyguard? What is it? Is it where you're going? Is it how long you're going to be there? Is it the nature of it? Is it the day? Is it just how you're feeling? Because you see celebrities without bodyguards all the time. I saw Elon Musk the other day in a video. He didn't have a bodyguard. Not that Elon Musk would have a bodyguard, but it's kind of funny. What do you mean Elon Musk what wouldn't have a bodyguard? Elon Musk would have a bodyguard, wouldn't he? I just saw him the other day, like on on some video, just like walking around like, by himself at <sighs> night outside of something. But I wonder if they have secret bodyguards that are watching them through binoculars with night vision. <laughs> yeah, they're guarding their body, literally a hundred feet away. They could be. That's the whole point: is that you're there next to them, throwing knives. <laughs> Thanks. That guy almost tackled me. Don't worry, I got him with a throwing knife. <laughs> That's sick. I, yeah, it's interesting. Oh, bodyguards. <sighs> wrap up mode. Is there anything that we <laughs> that we didn't wrap up? I don't know what the animal I'm thinking of was, Andrew. But I will say I will find it and I will put it on the screen. And if nothing shows up, <laughs> that means I said couldn't find it. Yeah, I still think it's a snake. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like <laughs> invert everything about a snake's attributes, and it's that. It's the opposite of it. A blowfish. That's the <laughs> a blowfish is the most opposite of a snake thing I could possibly think of, and that is a fact. Th that's not true at all. That is absolutely true. A blowfish uh, is the uh, most, objectively speaking, a blowfish is the most opposite of a snake animal that exists. They both have scales. They literally both have scales. They both have like like no like a, a skin. Okay, listen, like an outer layer. Yeah. Okay, but what is that layer on a they snake? They both are like kind of aquatic. I'm no. assuming there's a lot of snakes in like the, the like water area. A areas. snake has never entered water. <laughs> listen, that's Andrew. You blowfish this a uh, snake smooth smooth as ice. Sp uh, a snake smooth as ice. Blowfish spines everywhere. Uh, one's it lives in water. One does not. One lives in a tree. Uh, long is one. Circle is the other. You know what? Andrew and I, this podcast, have been... It's amazing. The idea of wrapping this up is amazing. Even though we've spoken about, like, nothing. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people have said in the comments... Oh, that's not true. What are you talking about? I think last episode, we talked more about nothing than this episode. Really? We talked about TikTok. We talked about the butterfly effect. We talked about, like, aviation. You're right. We talked about butterfly effect. I love the butterfly effect. I think it's really cool. You're right. Everything we do has consequence and i'll tell you what you for listening to this podcast you've made a couple of boys pretty happy so thank you for listening to our podcast of yes. just us rambling on uh i think that I, have a, I have a suspicion the next time we're going to get a little more centered and speak about something a little more substantive but you know what maybe that's okay that you're underestimating how, how substantive we had a cover yeah i think it was a pretty what about what it was it's just, it was a little all over the place but i think that there was enough maybe i'm just in a weird mood today maybe i'm just feeling a little uh self uh self maybe it's something uh. about valentine's day Maybe I'm just feeling some kind of way. All right. I <laughs> want to say thanks to everybody for yeah listening. And uh, you know what? Hope that this did some some good in your in your life, giving giving uh giving um the podcast your time. What's up? I gotta be so bad. Andrew, it's okay. Think. He's just trying to say we're so glad that you sometimes just want to hang out with us and kind of uh I think. But yeah, thank you for just like hanging out with us. And although Andrew might be stifled by his needing to, I gotta go. I got a piece of bad. It's like it's like weird. One time I had to pee really bad on a train. Did I ever tell you about that? It was wild. It was in Chicago. You tell me another time. My brother, my my siblings, they all do stuff like that. Like if I said I had to pee, they would like tackle me. It's weird. Well, we do appreciate you, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. We will be back next week with another potentially more focused conversation. Maybe we'll see. not. We'll see. But uh, oh oh, Andrew. <laughs> oh, we hope everyone has a fun day. Have a great day. Oh, drink water, drop your shoulders, breathe deep. And Not that much water, though, or you're going to be like me. Sound off in the comments about anything you want anything, to. We've anything. spoken about what it, we love comments. We're always talking in the comments. Say, say something to us in the comments. <sighs> Until we're back next time. Be sweet. And see you next week. <laughs> Happy peeing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>